you know, I started off going to make this video very short and just show you this new character that uh, Tony's been doing. But as I sat back and I started looking through his file, I noticed that there was about three or four other ones that I'd forgot that I'd collected um, that I was storing up to do another video. So this video quickly grew into uh, something a little bit bigger than I expected. Before I get into the new stuff, I wanted to review some of the other characters that he's played if you haven't seen my other videos. So it will bring everybody up to speed with who we're talking about and how, how he actually uh, is really gifted at what he does. We'll start off with this one. This is Tony playing one of the Freedom Fighters in the last piece that I exposed. This is Tony playing David D. Rothschild, and he's been doing this one for a while now. This is Tony playing a Hitler author, uh, as appropriate considering who his grandfather is. And this is him and his wife Annie playing Bin Laden's son Omar Bin Laden and his wife. Here's another shot of the two. And now we see also them in regular clothes and as normal people with their father, with Tony's father, Michael Greenberg, aka Dallas Green from the, from the Giffords event. Whenever you watch Brave New Studios, which is basically a Greenberg-funded um, propaganda station, this is Tony playing one of the uh, co-host. There's a bunch of their family members playing co-hosts on this show, by the way. Uh, this is Tony playing Anwar Malarkey. Like the name? Yeah. Take a look at the ears. You can see they match. So we know this definitely is him. Now I was going to take you in a different direction with this video, but I wanted to show you some of the interviews that Alex Jones has done with this person. He's been told that Tony plays David Rothschild. So this is a while back, he's been told, but yet he still has David D. Rothschild on his show again last week. But he had another person on his show last week that was pretty interesting. And uh, I'll let Alex give you the little um, intro that he did and see if it's fitting to what we're talking about here. Or torture is good and liberal, uh, things like that. Or mercury in shots is good for you, uh, things like that. Questioning 7-7, questioning 9-11. But then I saw this gentleman on the BBC. He seemed to be one of the most well-spoken and friendly fellows. And I have to say that, uh, that well, we're going to find out from him if Paul Watson's article is accurate. Because, again, these are the folks that can tell you if something is accurate or not. Well, because we know Alex Jones sure can't. I mean, come on, man. I mean, he's been told about Tony many times. Now watch. The squirrely characters that he has on here, like he can't spot them? Like he can't figure out who's fake? Of course he can. Of course he knows what's going on. This is the oracle high on the mountain that you go to to find out what's Veritas and what is deception. He's Jamie uh, Bartlett. Uh, he is the head of violence and extremism program. Uh, he tracks, uh, well, the troublemakers out there. So as you can tell, Alex, of course, did his homework and verified that. So this just goes to show you what Alex Jones has become in the past few months um, is nothing like he used to be. Uh, in fact, in the past year, he's really gone downhill, and his tone has really changed totally within this past three months, as, as so a lot of other um, media, alternative media outlets. And he still refuses to address anything that I've come up with, even though I was on the same network as him when I was on Joyce's show. So, you know, and he was contacted back in those days, too, but he refuses to address that stuff. So he has an agenda, and he's totally changed. He's not the person that he was. Since we outed his guys, the past two times they've gone out to do reports uh, talking to Pima County sheriffs that are acting. I mean, the one was Bradley Manning's father as the actor. Uh, unbelievable. And so we're honored to have him join us. Uh, from uh, England, Airstrip One, uh, where are you over there? I'm over in uh, East London here. Actually, Alex, I'm in the room right next to you. Well, it's good to talk to you. I'm sure you can try to do an anthropology study for the Hive Borg to, uh, to teach us. No, no, I'm going to stop being mean. Uh, what is your organization really about, Common Purpose? All those folks uh, trying to teach the, ch the school children about the evil internet? Paul Joseph Watson's article was a ridiculous, ridiculous, mis I think, intentional misunderstanding of what we said. 
No, what's actually ridiculous is the fact that Alex Jones would have Tony on again, even though he's in costume. I mean, this is just ludicrous. Now, here's another Tony appearance on Alex Jones that you uh, might remember. He also did uh, RT that day, too. And just, <laughs> the name is just, they're, they're funny. He can't pass up an opportunity to, uh, to play a game with the words. You're watching an InfoWars.com special report. We're about to interview a very interesting gentleman. He's a journalist. He's an author. He's also an extreme traveler. Uh, he interviewed the head of the Northern Alliance just weeks before he was killed. Uh, he was inside Afghanistan right before 9-11. He is journalist Pepe Escobar, and his book, Globalism, How the Globalized World is Dissolving into Liquid War, is an absolute must-read. <laughs> that name just cracks me up. Man, either Alex has lost it, or his producers are just definitely playing a trick on him or something, because, I mean, <laughs> Pepe Escobar. Yeah, wait till you see the next ones coming up. They're even funnier. Pepe, thank you so much for joining us. Great talking to you, Alex. Camera angle and how close you are to the lens does a lot to the image. Well, you have uh, been reporting for Asia Times uh, that uh, Al-Qaeda has taken over Tripoli and is being handed uh, the nation. The L.A. Times even admits that the leaders uh, of most of the rebellion uh, are actual jihadi Al-Qaeda fighters. What can you tell us from your decade-plus research? Look, I had to confirm, a lot of us came to this information different ways, of course. Uh, the LA Times, for instance, the Independent in London, al Shark al Assad in the Middle East, and myself, but we got to the same conclusion. The top military guys in Tripoli... In now, I want you to watch this next one. This one's uh, pretty, pretty slick. This is Tony interviewing himself on RT. Our questions over what his fate might mean for the world. For more on this, we're joined by Pepe Escobar, a correspondent for the Asia Times, live from Brazil. So, Mr. Escobar, Osama bin Laden, a man credited with some of the most horrific acts of terrorism, finally dead. Do you think the world's a safer place? Now, this is a really good lesson in makeup and lighting and how cameras can actually make your nose appear totally different. As we can see, this is Tony, and we can see the ears look different because it's a slight different angle that he's on. His face is tilted slightly different the other direction but again to somebody that works in this industry they they know these things they know these tricks um, and all three of those things combined together can really change the uh, uh, the look of a person completely um, and Tony is actually one of the he's very skilled at this you, you can see in his other um, characters that he plays he definitely takes advantage of uh, all the uh, tricks of the trade now we have one more a new one that I just found uh, today actually and this one's actually going to lead into some other things that I've been working on that I think you're going to find really uh, incredible so here we go yeah what it boiled down to is um, some uh, folks were pulled over uh, for speeding and uh, one of them began recording the police and they didn't like that so they arrested her and uh, I came down to the police station to bail her out, and uh, I wasn't even recording, um, and, but they thought I was, and um, saw fit to arrest me. So um, it's clear that uh, they're not really comfortable with being recorded. I don't know why. One would think that they're public servants, and if they're doing their job, um, the job that they're hired to do and the way it's supposed to be done, then there would nothing be nothing to... Now he's also got something in his uh, upper lip. Uh, similar to like the, what they used in uh, the movie The Godfather, some padding to make his lips stick out further, um, just to change the shape of his face a little bit. But you can still see that it's absolutely him. And we'll look at his ears, and you can you can uh, definitely tell. Absolutely not. Um, the uh, unfortunate thing is that there there are some great reps on the. This is Tony's nephew. You might remember him from. New York occupied Wall Street. He's the one that did the rant. He's also got something in his mouth too to make his face look a little bit different, but you can tell it's still him. You can look at his eyes. They're sunken in. It's it's him. But unfortunately, the camera doesn't actually get in close on this guy because of they know we're watching. The whole world is watching, right? It didn't exist before. In addition to that, 
Um, it has uh, certain exceptions for um, for what they call. Um, All right, this is the guy I want you to take a special note of. This is Stuart Rhodes. Pay attention to the nose and to the ears. They match. There's nobody else. You'd like them maybe to, you know, respond to the public? Take some accountability. Tough to do when they run away. So, um, the, the whole interference thing is just way too... Which brings me to this last piece of this video. And this is a big one. This is, this is, this is huge. This is going to tie a lot of different things in together and make it all one cohesive uh, understanding of what's going on. Now, you recall... Stuart Rhodes from the Quartzite incident with uh, Jennifer Jones. If you don't know about it, just look at my other videos and you'll see. Um, I've exposed all those people that were involved in that, and they're all Pima County officials as well. Now, there was one individual in the Quartzite situation. His name was Ponce, Officer Ponce. Now, we exposed Ponce as being a liar a few times, and this is going to be pretty shocking when you see this image that I found. So here we have Ponce chilling out on the beach. This picture was taken in 2010 in July. Nothing so spectacular about that. But we see this next photograph that's in the same album where Ponce has a friend with him. Alright, so Ponce got a wife. Okay, so what's the big deal about that? Well, check this out. This person is one of Jared Loeffner, the fictitious character, Jared Loeffner, because we know the Gabriel Giffords event was a drill. This is one of the people that played his teacher at Pima. Now, you might ask yourself, why is that so significant? Well, this is Ponce that's supposed to be a police officer in Quartzite, 400, 500 miles away. He's married to this woman, but this picture is taken before both the Quartzite and before the Jared Loeffner, Gabriel Giffords incident. Now, to make matters even worse, wait till you see who else is at this little get-together on the beach. This is little Ponce and his sister. So that kid look familiar to you? This is the actress that they would use when they weren't using Samantha. This is the fill-in actor. But then, the brother Ponce. Check this out. So what we've effectively done right here, since these individuals are all together before any of the events that they appear in, We've connected them all together to a massive conspiracy. The fact that Gabriel Giffords, Loeffner, Quartzite, Christina, Taylor Green, all of them are connected by the same people, same family, and they're together on the same beach, including some more people that you're going to flip out about. So we've now proven all those events frauds. Check this out. As I'm going through the photos in this album, I see this guy and for some reason it just it sticks in my head and I, I know I've seen him before. It took me about an hour or two to, to think about it but I finally figured out where I had seen him before. So remember a little bit back when I said when I went to the Dallas Occupied protest that I, I got that feeling when I was even across the street that they knew that I was heading their way? Well they did know and they prepared for it but say you're at an event and you're told that this guy that's on the internet is exposing people and they happen to be your family that they're exposing how do you think you're gonna react when you know you're gonna run right into the dude but you can't do anything about it you can't say anything you can't confront him you can't do anything about it that's the face right there that you'd be making. That dude is hot right now. He just wants to jump through that camera and just rip my lungs out. <laughs> but he can't. He can't do anything about it.
Now, Dunn was the idiot that day, about ten minutes after this, and flipped me off, which totally clued me into who he was, because if he hadn't even had done that, I wouldn't even have known. I wouldn't have paid any attention to him. They'd have just been faces that I just knew in my head but didn't have a name for. But no, Dunn had to screw it all up for this whole family. Now watch. So the guy shooting me the nasty looks. He's brothers with Ponce. All right. Now, Ponce and this guy have a couple more brothers. Maybe you'll recognize this one. This is Richard Sexton and Jennifer Sexton. Jennifer Greenberg Sexton. Jennifer and Richard are the mother and father of Samantha Sexton and Emily Sexton, who's sitting there. Christ Christina Taylor Green, a.k.a. Samantha Sexton. Jennifer here is the sister of Tony, and Jennifer also is the one who plays Rebecca Joy, who also plays Gabrielle Giffords, who also is the grandchild of Maurice Greenberg. But wait, hang on, it gets even better. It gets way better. So her husband here, Richard Sexton, whose brother is Patrick Sexton. Now you go, Patrick Sexton, well, who's that? Well, his name's a little bit different than uh, his name that he uses uh, outside of his family. Like, you know, like most Hollywood people do. So we have Jeffrey Katzenberg, you know, CEO of DreamWorks. Business partners, Steven Spielberg, um, David Geffen, some of the richest guys on the planet. Oh, but wait, it gets even better. It gets way better. So we're still climbing up the food chain here, and I'm seeing another face that looks familiar, but I, I couldn't quite tell who it was. So I see these two, and I'm like, man, he looks familiar. And I'm like, is it? David Rockefeller? Like, but wait a second, there, there's no way that could be David Rockefeller just because of the age. I mean, the guy looks way too too good. That's David Rockefeller Jr. Oh my. So let me break this down for you. We got Rockefeller Sr., all right, whose father and he were in charge of Operation Paperclip. Back in those days, Josef Mengele and Adolf Einhorn and a bunch of other Nazis came over through Paperclip. Well, guess who brought them over here? Rockefeller funded them to come over here. So now, when these two guys get over here from Auschwitz, they are given new identities. We see the paperwork here for Maurice, and we can also see that that paperwork is forged and faked. It's not correct. And I can go into this in more detail in another video. As you'll see, the signatures on here are have been photocopied or have been photoshopped later on. These documents are not authentic. So now, we have two war criminals over here that... Rockefeller Sr. has taken a liking to. He also funded Maurice Strong back in the early days to get him started with uh, after he brought them over here and after he gave him some money to do his oil ventures up in Canada. So you have these two guys basically, okay, now what do they do for a family? Well, the only people that they could really hang around with are the people that know who they are because eventually somebody's gonna find out so you have to stick around with the people that are, are close to you so Rockefeller Jr. here comes along and of course the family members and and everybody starts to mingle together so you got Rockefeller who also had Abby Abby on the other side was an Aldrich that family is the one that mingled with the Strong family. You can see the Strong family tree goes down and one of the daughters of Strong is now married to
to Jeffrey Katzenberg. Here's their photo. The other daughter of Strong, he's got many daughters, he's got four or five, his other daughter is Vicki Strong Greenberg, who married Maurice Greenberg's son, Michael. Now that was his third marriage. He had two wives before that, and that's where you see Jennifer and Tony from. So, you have the three biggest names there are on this planet right now. In control of this planet, and each of them has major connections to the UN. Each of them has major connections to eugenics. All of them have a distaste for the United States and want the New World Order. They have all said this in their own words. Maurice Greenberg tried to do what he could with AIG to basically get the whole campaign to collapse everything with our financial market with that bubble. And here's a funny thing. If you look at Maurice Greenberg's papers when he came over here from Auschwitz, the person that he put on there as an emergency contact, their last name was Sachs. So <laughs> you can see this massive conspiracy that has just been unraveled here with this whole photo album that I found. It puts all the key players in place. It connects every single one of them and guess where of course they all live out in Phoenix and Tucson. It connects them all together before the Gabrielle Giffords event, before the Quartzite event, before the Occupied event, before any of those events. The family members are there. They're all together. They've all done their roles, including Tony and everyone else on the other side of Strong's family, who we have Ellie Vole, who plays Orly Tates, the Obama birth certificate fraud. Um, and we also have her playing another character, Susan Lindau, another fraud whistleblower and we see that Sybil Edmonds is Annie Greenberg Tony's wife we see that of course the rumors were that Soros was one of these people involved in this family because the WikiLeaks remember WikiLeaks the URL was actually owned by Soros and he passed it off to one of his orgs but we see at the Occupy movement the WikiLeaks truck driving around and then we see at that occupied movement in Dallas another family member that gives me this the look of death can you now understand the immensity of this entire conspiracy you have Maurice Strong whose friend was Paul Volcker back in 2002 he actually wrote the foreword in his book while he was the head of the uh, Federal Reserve. You see Greenberg, Strong, and Rockefeller putting all their funds together to fund Soros's organizations. He has about 60 of them now that are all from that Tucson area, including including Move On, including Code Pink. Here's Homegirl without her uh, costume on. See, that's the whole game plan. They wear these costumes, these fake characters, so when they get out of character, you could be standing right next to them, and you wouldn't know who they are. So they plan on getting away with this type of crap, and then walking away from it, and you don't know who you're looking for, somebody that doesn't exist. That's the game. Now, what I want to do is I want to expose every one of them so they become familiar with everybody's face, because I seriously doubt any justice is going to be meted because of the fact that they are so well entrenched with politics and the government that I seriously doubt anything will ever ever be able to come to court with these people so it is up to these civilians or the basically the population that of the uh, the 99 percenters let's say that need to pay attention to who these faces are and make sure that they realize that we know who they are everywhere they go if you see them in a restaurant let them know that you know who they are 
and we're going to be watching them make their lives as uncomfortable as they have made ours our entire lives now I'm going to go through some of these uh, these people that are part of it and it's going to be very fast so I'm not going to really spend too much time on each one of these but since I have your attention right now I'm going to drop a few more bombs and uh, let you think about it, let your head explode a little bit more here's the first one Bill Cooper from Tucson Arizona the radio announcer he made a couple bad calls back in the day where he uh, talked about the limo driver JFK case shooting uh, JFK with an electric gun well Grodin and I debunked that when I was working on high treason back in the early uh, late nine late eighties early nineties so he suffered a lot of um, let's say ridicule because of that so he had to reinvent himself so he fakes his death but before he fakes his death he has an interview with himself just like Tony did and he comes back after a nose job as guess who Jordan Maxwell now I'll spend some more time on this one in a later video but I just wanted to drop that bomb on you just to get you thinking because when you start looking at the pictures and you start listening to the voice you'll see that that's right so that's another fraud that's taking people's money that comes from Arizona oh who else do we have let's see if you've watched my other videos you know about Vicki Strong Greenberg her sisters are here Denise V. Wool, I've mentioned before her daughter is Arden she's the one I exposed that is down at the uh, occupied event in New York right now she's a graduate of NYU film school she's a uh, a director producer she's down there was the one that was filming the rant from her cousin the crazy kid that was down there now Denise though she's got a little bit of a history when it comes to acting she's no stranger to the game remember that other drill that was a school shooting drill called Columbine well this is one of the teachers that was supposedly para paralyzed with a gunshot guess who yeah so when you look into the Columbine thing you'll see the video that I did that was a total scam total total drill and here's the kicker of that one well there's a couple kickers of it actually the individuals that supposedly pulled the triggers so how would you like this you guys play the bad guys and we'll make sure that you get funded for whatever projects you want to do say like South Park yeah and of course you know they went to Columbine as well and the ears match and the faces match now let's look at his partner try telling me they don't match I've run the ears I run the faces they match so while you're watching South Park these guys are raking in the money laughing it up each time the show comes on because you were so afraid that your kids gonna get shot at school that you had to pass all these laws and stuff and have all the funding go for security and cameras and metal detectors all because of a scam oh yeah and check this out see what they're doing right here they're slapping you in the face by doing this watch they're posing in the same exact position as they did back in that day just to see if you'd notice to see if you pay attention even with the same facial expressions and for those of you that still deny the fact that Ryan Dunn is Jesse LaGreca there's the ears just take a look at them by the way that earring is a magnetic one it doesn't go through um, but look at the inner ear look at the helix look at the trega they're identical and if somebody wants they can do a voice print on them and you'll see that they do match as well they didn't even bother changing his voice because they figured that nobody would even be thinking about it so to sum this all up basically for the past hundred or so years the Rockefellers and all these other rich families that we've always thought were problems except we're, we didn't really see the Greenbergs as, as any problem in there except for the fact that they were associated with you know AIG and trying to take us down that way well 
we see that for the past hundred years they've had a mission and that mission is to set the financial structure in place to collapse this current structure to get the European structure the same way and then to blend it together in the next well, I don't know maybe 10 years or so the new world order now the fact that that hundred years goes by and they're working their hardest everybody in the whole family's working trying to deceive the public doing a good job and then next thing you know here I come along and I throw a big old wrench inside that gearbox bring that thing to a screeching halt no wonder that guy was shooting me the nastiest look he's probably ever shot anybody in his life <laughs> they are probably so furious at this but I tell you what the only person they have to blame is themselves because they were the ones that put those photographs out there they were the ones that left the door open and thank God they did so now you see Rockefellers and everything else that are taking part in this massive fraud I seriously think that now that I look back on this information that maybe there is enough here to prosecute I mean that's domestic terrorism what they're trying to do now the fact that they're embedded in the government so deeply like I said before that I, I, nothing probably ever come out of it I, I can't see how the American population will let this happen let them get away with this and I'm not saying do what Occupy has done I'm saying hound these people everywhere they go every step they take somebody should be on them giving them a piece of their mind telling them exactly how they feel about them what they've done to them how they've harmed this planet how they've harmed us how they've harmed everybody around in this entire globe with their their bogus wars their bombs their just their lies hold every single one of them accountable for every single day of the rest of their lives make them feel it make them feel the fear that we feel every day that they've instilled in us because of the lies that they've tricked us to believe man if your head's not ready to pop at this point I don't know what is because I mean that is just unbelievable unbelievable well that's it for now I got a few more things, a few more videos that I want to make, but uh, for now I'm going to take a little break and uh, regroup, maybe do some interviews and, and take care of the website. Uh, thank you everybody that's been a supporter and that has donated. Um, it has been crazy these past few months and I don't expect it to uh, ease up. So if anybody has any questions about this material please feel free to send me an email and I will respond to you as soon as I can um, if you're looking for high resolution images to do some facial analysis uh, forensic work on just let me know and I can send you over what I have um, voice print wise I don't have any equipment to do that so if anybody can help us out and do a few of the uh, characters we have here that would be much appreciated and um, until next time